Hello and welcome back to the Groundbreaker International YouTube channel. As always, it's good to be here with you. And today we are going to be studying another Hebrew word. This is going to be the word for city in Hebrew. And we're going to be talking about the word air and the root word that comes from that. So I'm excited to see uh, the breakdown of this word today. So come along with me over to the whiteboard and we're going to study this thing out. This is a, an amazing uh, Hebrew word today that we're going to be talking about. It starts with the letter ayin and then moves on to the letter yud, and then we have the letter resh. Now, the ayin, let's just talk about each letter for just a moment and break it down. The ayin is a picture of two eyes. It's made up of two yuds here that has a connective uh, optic nerve, so to speak, that goes uh, signifies as going to the brain. And so we have these two eyes connecting to the optic nerve. So it literally means to see or behold or look at something. That's the letter ayin. And so it's the number 70 in Hebrew gematria. And the ayin is all about seeing or looking at something. And I love how these letters, uh, you know, are so visual because I'm a visual person anyway. I like to see things and, you know, just the way that it's even broken down by the letter shows literally to see something. It's the gateway to the uh, to the soul right here, the eyes connecting to the brain stem. So your brain, of course, and your eyes work together, and that's a picture of seeing something in, in the physical. Uh, of course, it's got spiritual connotation as well, but let's move on right now to the letter Yod, which of course is the, the letter for hand. It, the word yod actually means hand, if you spell it out. It's the, the word for hand. And it's also a picture of the hand of God. And even more specifically, because it's the spark of the Spirit in everything. It's called by Jewish rabbis. It can also represent like a spark of fire as well. So there's all those connotations and meanings right here in the letter yod. Of course, it's the letter ten and the Yod also can represent uh, the nation of Israel because Israel is the smallest nation. You're one of the smallest nations, but has such a great impact. In the same way, the Yod is one of the smallest letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It's very close to the middle of the alphabet, not quite in the middle, but it's a transitional letter that moves from the first uh, part of the alphabet into the next part almost like moving from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And so just some different things about the Yod there to keep in mind. And then, of course, we have the Resh, and the Resh is the head or the chiefest of things. And it actually shows uh, the, the head bending down. And as you can see here, it's somebody bending down in humbleness as the, the connotation of poverty or being impoverished not necessarily as not having anything uh, in the natural, but being impoverished as in humility, as we have nothing without God. We have to stay in that race motion with our heads bent over and listening for the voice of the Lord. And so that's the number 200 in Hebrew gematria. And so let's look at this word as a whole here. It comes from a root word, and that root word is the word or. So we, we have the word ear here, which means city, but it comes from the root word or. Now the root word means an awareness or an excitement about something, to have awareness or excitement. Now that's really kind of interesting because what in the world would that have to do with a city? Well, I'm going to show you in just a moment. That word or there is the ayin, the vav, and the resh together. And it means to watch and be aware. So we have the ear, which actually means an awareness or excitement of something. Sorry, I got that a little bit backwards. But the or, the word or, which is the root word to watch or be aware. So this is the verb. This is an excitement or something that, that causes awareness or excitement or stirring up. And the word or means is the verb of that means to watch or to be aware. And so here's uh, this word, if you kind of put this together. So city, remember, this is this is the put together version of the word, but or 
you would replace the yod right here with the vav. And when you do that, you get something very interesting happens. Let's just move this up, pretend that's up here for a moment, and move that yod out of the way. So when we do that, here is what the word, uh, the root word of the word city is. You have to see and to be aware. Isn't that awesome? It literally shows us a picture of what that root word is, or to watch and be, be aware, to watch, to see, and because the vav, the letter vav means and, it's a connective hook, and to be aware, to be aware of your surroundings because uh, the, the resh also has the connotation of awareness because it's the head, and it means to basically like to keep your head on a swivel, as they say, and to be aware of things around you. So the root word of that is very interesting, but that's not the word city with the vav in it. It's the, the yod is the one that has the vav in it. And so let's put that together for just a minute because uh, this is, gets kind of interesting right here. Literally, you know, you have or, which is to watch and be aware, but literally here we have to watch, and then we have a hand, and then we have to be aware or uh, the head or chiefest of things or head. So we have awareness, we have eyes, we have a hand, and then we have a head. Now, how many of you know, this is very simple to figure out, on our head is where our eyes and our brain is connected to, right? <laughs> Hopefully, most of us anyway. And then we have the yod here, which is the hand. All right, so we have this word city here. Now, what is a city? That's why you have to, to really kind of bear down and figure out what does all this have to do with a city? Well, a city is a place of watchmen. And it kind of, kind of comes down to the old ancient cities in which they were barricaded. There were borders and walls up. And you couldn't just walk into from one city to the next. There were watchmen on the walls all through the night. And that's where you hear that term watchmen on the wall. There were people that would watch over the city, that would protect the city and keep it from harm and intruders. And then you would also have people stirring within the city as well. So you had an awareness, you had a buzz going on, an excitement going on in the city. Why? Because a city is a place where people dwell. It's a gathering place that uh, you can come together and gather and be aware of one another. Now let's put this in spiritual terms though for just a moment, because when we watch and are aware, we can also be watchful and aware, not of other people, but also about what the hand of God is doing. And so when we look at it in spiritual terms here, God is wanting the city, the gathering place, to be watchful and aware of His coming and His doings. The hand of God is always moving, and the hand of God is always doing something. And God wants people within the city, within regions, to be aware of His coming and what He is doing. We are to be the watchmen on the wall, to be aware of what God is doing to not fall asleep, but to have the awareness, to have our heads on a swivel and to watch what God is doing. That's why I believe it's vitally important that within our cities, that we are the watchmen on the wall. Now, what does that mean exactly? That doesn't necessarily mean chase every preacher out of town that comes, comes through there to try to help. Now, I know there's wolves in sheep's, sheep's clothing, but that's not what I'm talking about. We are to take care of the city that God has placed us in. We are to take care of that ear, that place that God has placed us in with His hand so that we can be aware of the people around us to reconcile them to Jesus Christ, right? So that we can be aware of the people around us to the needs of the people, to the impoverished people as well. See, I could keep going with, with all of this so that we can do the work of God, we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Isn't that absolutely 
awesome and beautiful today. That's why I love the Hebrew language so much, because if you just talk about uh, the word city in the Bible, well, that could be very interesting in and of itself, but put it in these terms and how much more important that cities are. Now, here's something interesting as well. If you add these letters up, you get the number 200, 10, and 70. Add all of that up, and you have, of course, 280. Now, let's take 270, and then not the 10 this time, let's... Let's deduct the word or, which is the vav in between. So you have 280 minus 276. I found that if you do this, you get something interesting that happens. If you take 280 and you deduct 276, so in other words, you're taking the word city and you're just subtracting it from the word or, the, the original root word, of that, you get the number four. What is significant about the number four? Well, some of you that have watched our videos before will know that the number four is the letter Dalit. And the Dalit is representative of a door. And what is in a city, especially the ancient cities? It was a door. The door is what keeps intruders out and the people inside. And between the outside of the city and the inside of the city, there is a gateway to get through, and that would be the door. The other connotation of this as well that is kind of interesting, the resh is very similar to the dalit. It also means humbleness and awareness, and it takes a, a humble person, somebody with the right heart to be able to enter into a city. Why? Because if I were to walk in ancient times uh, into a city that I was not known in, they wouldn't just let me in. I would have to talk my way into that city and I would have to obviously be humble. I'm not just going to walk in there and say, you know, show me the, show me the king, show me the, the person that's in charge right now because I got something to say to them. My name is Eric Burton, and I'm coming into your city. Guess what? They're probably going to shoot an arrow at you, or they're going to kick you out. They're not going to let you into the city. But it would take a humble heart, a humble person, to make their way into the city. Let me tell you something right now. Uh, pastors, leaders, fivefold ministers, or anyone that's listening right now, if you want the heart of your city, it's going to take humbleness. It's going to take uh, being prepared and being aware of what God wants us to do and not what we want to do. And we're going to have to shut our eyes sometimes to things in the natural and open our eyes to the spiritual things to reach our cities for Jesus Christ, right? So um, one other way that you can see this is, is this right here. And this, I believe, I'm, I'm going to leave you on this note today, that not only... Not only is it us being aware of what's going on in our city, but the city needs to be aware of God. So look at it like that, that the city, the gathering place, needs to see and be aware of God as well. God's heart is for cities and regions for people to come to Him. And God has placed people within uh, specific city limits and, and places and jurisdictions for such a time as this, for their own purposes and uh, plans that God has on their lives. And so if you look at it like that as well, God has a plan for every city. God's into boundaries and God's into doorways. And, and I believe that the Lord can open and close doors as He sees fit. And so looking at it from the side of a minister Sometimes we're allowed to go through some doors and we're, uh, we are not allowed to go through. We're access denied on other doors. And God has His purposes and His plans for those things. But we have to be aware of what God is doing and listen to the voice of the Lord and remain humble as we listen to His voice and not get haughty and prideful and try to kick down doors in which God doesn't want us to go to. And so those are just a few things today talking about the word city, just one word in the Hebrew, 
And we've talked, I mean, we've broken this thing down all kinds of different ways today, and I'm sure that there's other ways that you can break it down as well. But listen, I want to thank you so much for watching this today. Make sure you go to our website and sign up to become a ministry partner with us at Groundbreaker International. We would love to have you on board. We'll send you a digital newsletter each month called Revival Times, and you will want to see that and see everything that God is doing all over the United States, all over the world, and we want you to be connected. Until next time, God bless you. God bless your family. We'll see you real soon. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can receive updates for when new content arrives. Also, be sure to visit our website at gbreaker.org. From there, you can learn more about Groundbreaker International. And if the Lord leads you to do so, you can sow a financial seed of blessing. Now, I would like to invite you to check out one of these other videos from Groundbreaker International's YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless.